Hey, Scott Jordan and Mark Warner here for Jancast number 127th for Thursday, July 14th, 2022. July 14th. Oh, man. That means I, I can see winter around the corner, Mark. I uh, I, no, I can't really see that far. And if <laughs> I could, I would change my glasses so I couldn't. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, um, I'm still trying to figure out how to fully enjoy summer and and yep. stunned that we're at the mid isn't this considered mid midsummer yeah like, it's gonna uh, be um what <laughs> gonna be 90 degrees here uh, today so uh yeah it's uh it's out there so what's going on in the world mark I, well when you say the world i'm sure you mean like our cleaning world yes and yeah, well, um, that, that and other places yeah. well you know that under that umbrella of cleaning fits things like um infectious disease control Mm -hmm. because cleaning is all about health now yep. um but you know the big thing that's going on is um you know we're we're we have a new brand new omicron on steroids called uh ba 2.75 which has been nicknamed centaurus um so we got to watch out for that one it's, i'm gonna have um, to come out with a new uh omicron glass version then yeah, so this one apparently it's got some like really long and extra high quantity of noodles that yeah. come out for sticking in to places. So, but um, there uh, it's eight to nine mutations beyond the BA5 and the wow. BA5 was the most recent one. And and that's what caused uh, the problem in China. Like they've yeah. got the BA5.2, which is, um, you know, the one after <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever <laughs> it's it's so the ba 2.75 scott came eight times after the ba 5.2 so something isn't adding up there numerically yeah wait a me. second um, I, that's that is true and somebody anyway, somebody uh, somebody wrote the check number in their checkbook the wrong way and said oh we can't fix it now we'll just change the number <laughs> system I'm, right i'm not sure i can explain the numerics there but <laughs> But 2.75 came after 5.2, and right. it's um, eight to nine mutations more advanced. And, and it's really called the stealth Omicron because it evades um, vaccinations and boosters, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, But the bigger deal, obviously, is not that. The bigger deal is what happened in China because China went into another lockdown. And you know, you're talking about tens of millions of people being locked down again. You remember last time yeah. people were like sending notes out the window, like I need yeah. food, I need water. Yeah, um, we, well, we talked about the, how would that work in Philadelphia? There's kind of lockdown Philadelphia and everybody there, you can't leave Philadelphia, you can't go into Philadelphia. And how's that in, work? Boy, in I mean, Philadelphia, I, I would not want to be the messenger of that message. Yeah. I yeah. just don't think you would survive the day. Yeah. But um but the reality of it is, you know, they're going through a lockdown. They're attempting to kind of quell this, this outbreak. But we know what happened last time, Scott. Last time, it closed all the ports. All the yep. plants got closed. And we went into probably the worst supply chain nightmare. Supply, supply chain nightmare I remember in my entire career. Yeah. Um, yeah. Couldn't get triggers. Couldn't get bottles. Couldn't get caps. Couldn't get packaging. Um you know, certain chemistries, certainly a lot of uh, pieces for cleaning equipment, like the um, the chips. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, the big question is if they're doing this lockdown again, what's that mean? Does it yeah. mean we're going to have these supply chain problems again? But well, even you know. even talking about it potentially will cause supply chains. And then, the, I mean, I've read somewhere that one of the big issues is the the whole disruption of the supply chain created the situation where there's these containers now in various parts of the world that aren't part of the normal flow of the containers you know so normally you get stuff from china it comes into newark and you empty it out and then the newark uh, containers go someplace else well because of all this disruption with supply chain and everything else there's containers that are like places where they're never going to end up coming back because there's not any reason for those locations to ship stuff out. So it could take years, even with everything being perfect, uh, to get back to normal, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy the way the whole thing's evolved. Uh, well, yeah. the good news is um, 
you know, uh, John Noderf and uh, yeah. Bill Ballack of uh, the ISSA, they've, they've been very active with the um, advocacy yeah. of the cleaning industry in general. And they've been involved with, um, with an Ocean Shipping Reform Act, trying to get away from at least the, um, the appearance of like, greed and piracy. You know, what's yeah. been happening is, you know, people will order things and they arrive close to being uh, unloaded and then it's like well you know you gotta give us another 20 grand unloaded yeah. you know or we're gonna put you in line and it'll be unloaded in february of 2024 <laughs> you know? yeah. so um so they're trying to make sure that there's some um policing taking place so that people aren't being um taken advantage of well and that, that ties in with my comment about the container so I, Bullen would be a perfect example. You know, we order something uh, and we don't get too many things from uh, Korea or China. But when we find out the freight has gone from, well, let's say, three thousand dollars to fifteen thousand, we say, well, we can't possibly sell a product with that add on cost of the freight. So we cancel our order. And there's a container that potentially could have come back from wherever China or Korea to the United States. It's not going to come back because we we're not going to buy that product anymore so until the freight cost comes down uh there's a whole bunch of them that situation around the world from other companies just like us that's a, and we have customers in puerto rico and various other places that they can't afford the shipping cost and and, and they're just not going to order anymore so uh, the whole thing's just a complete mess that nobody ever planned for but thanks to the issa at least for kind of doing what they can uh, uh, as, you know, they obviously have a, a heavy amount of lobbying effort that they put into that. So that's, that's really good news. Yeah. It's good to know we've got a voice at least representing the industry that, um, you know, hopefully will be heard in Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. But, you well, know, that, that kind of lends us to talking about, you know, what, what's the future look like if supply chains are hitting, if we've got infectious diseases? I mean, how many things have we been dealing with in the last two years? Yeah. We've had crazy weather. We've had, um, you know, yep. infectious disease, pandemic outbreaks. We've had, um, you know, the, the whole supply chain issue that, that's affected things beyond just being able to get stuff. It's caused skyrocketing inflation. We've got yeah. wars going on overseas that are unlike anything we've probably most of us have ever lived through. Yep. Um, so there's just so many things going on out there. The question is what, what, you know, does the future look like for the- Well, fortunately we have- general? Some, Fortunately, we have some facts and I will put a, we'll put a link uh, below the show so you can download this report. But I thought, not just me, Mark and I both thought there's some really, really positive stuff that came from this report. This is a joint study conducted by Contracting Profits Magazine and uh, Building Service Contractors Association International. So uh, it's a you know it's study that's out there, and uh, let's go over some of the results because I I thought it was very promising, quite honestly. Yeah. Oh well, I learned some things from it. Yeah. That was kind of like the big thing. Um, but you know the some of the things that we've been talking about a lot is that are, are maybe <clears throat> common knowledge, but things like um, the frequency of cleanings have yeah. gone up. You know, we kind of yeah. see that not just with BSCs, but with in-house service providers too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's um, one of the big changes that's happened. Yeah. Uh, very few in comparison have maintained the same service frequencies as what they had before COVID. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty significant. Yeah, that means that that's a mind shift in the 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 end consumer that's going into those facilities as well as the facility owners as well as the building service contractors so we've we've definitely seen a complete shift in the and if you looked at this three years ago or three and a half years ago before the pandemic uh, you never would have thought that you'd have that kind of shift so it's a very positive from from a, a company that manufactures disinfectant and cleaning products it's it's great because it means uh, there's going to be need for our product. There's no miracle thing out there that you throw in a room and then it's sanitized and germ free for the next month. Well, you know, the uh, survey basically is kind of stressing the fact that the consumers really now do have an elevated standard of yeah. cleanliness. And the yeah. question is, you know, where 
where are they putting their focus? Who has got this elevated perception of uh, of a standard? And you know the uh, you know retail certainly, restaurants, transportation, recreational, they're all yeah. like like more than doubled in terms of what the awareness level is and the importance they put on it. Yeah. So the sur the survey talks about the, one of the questions with Target where where is growth going to come from and. The top one was retail, which involves grocery stores, shopping malls, auto dealers, 63% uh, there. The next one, as you said, restaurants and clubs, that's a 60% uh, of the people think that there's going to be growth in that area. Transportation, that's a huge one, 82%. Um, airports, public transport, airlines, buses, and railway stations. So, And then last, not last, but the next significant one was recreational facilities so movie theaters casinos bowling alleys bowling alleys that's that's a good one yeah <laughs> i can never have enough bowling as far as yeah. i'm concerned um that's 74 percent. so um really significant uh, positive thoughts about growth there yeah. and part of it is um you know in this survey it talks about what do um what do with all this growth what do contractors really have to do to kind of set themselves apart you know yeah. what are they doing to kind of document <clears throat> their skill and knowledge kind of thing and so another piece of this had as a conversation about um what certifications building service contractors mm -hmm. actually shoot to get um to differentiate themselves from everybody yeah. else yeah that's because their their customers are asking for it too right yeah, well, it kind of boils down to, if you remember, even with COVID, when it hit, you know, people just didn't want somebody untrained, unskilled coming into their home or business, you know, walking around with, you know, you know, glass cleaner and paper towel, just like shooting, you know, <laughs> everywhere. Because the reality of it is, if you don't know what you're doing when it comes to disinfecting, you tend to be the one that spreads the disease and people yeah. know that. So the uh, the bigger question is, how do people prove the beyond a shadow of a doubt or document that they have this knowledge. And um, there's a lot of places that people go to. IICRC is one of them. We've referred to them many times. Yeah. That's the Institute of Inspection, Cleaning and Restoration Certification. Um, they have a lot of people that are out there certified primarily because they offer about 40 different certifications that revolve not just around the care of floors and carpets or upholstery, but they also do certifications that relate to inspectors, flooring inspectors and carpeting inspectors and flood damage and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. So, and then they certainly cater, I guess, primarily to the restoration community, people that are doing flood damage and smoke yeah. damage and fire damage. Uh, but, you know, they, in second place is some um, second and third, you know, kind of rolling together is yeah. programs that, um, that BSCAI has put together, like the Certified Building Service Executive. You had asked me about that one, like what, um, you know, who would do that? And it's, yeah. it's not just building service contractors that might want to do that, but also people that maybe work for the building owner that want oh, okay. to be certified in that so that they can hire and outsource um, the work. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to speak the same language. And that's really where that comes from. And then, you know, tied into those is, you know, infection control practitioners. Right. Um, so that's CMIP, Certificate of Mastery in Infection Prevention. So that's pretty relevant. That's put together by AHE and AHA, which is another association, does a similar one, which is a Certified Healthcare Environmental Services Professional. IEHA, which is a division of ISSA, has their own version of it, the Certified Housekeeping Executive. Um, certified executive housekeeper, sorry. And then GBAC, we've talked about that a lot. They've got their own, which is the Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council. When you wrap all them together, they kind of make a second place listing. Yeah. The, um, the others that we've talked about a lot, Scott, is SIMS and SIMS GB. And yep. you know all that is um, things that you and I've gotten cert certified in years ago. Yeah. Um, but that's the cleaning industry management standard and GB as the uh, suffix stands for green building. So when everybody got into trying to figure out, you know, what's toxic, what's not toxic, you know, what's good for the environment, what's safe to work with, that's where the the uh, certification SIMS came from. And then guys like you and me, Scott, back in the day, we went and got certified on how to help people yeah. get certified. And that 
is called the CCE now. It's the SIM certification expert. Um, years ago, I think they used to call it ICE, but yeah, that's a famous acronym for the immigration service. So I don't think that was popular. Um, just saying. <laughs> I don't think they had. I don't think it was that big of a deal when they came up with that one. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. let's not forget the most some of the more important ones that for some reason are not on the building service contractors list. Uh, but it's encouraging that uh, this this uh, list of certifications that the uh, BSCs earn or or have any interest in uh, is pretty pretty long. It looks like you know, almost every every uh, building service contractor that uh, is of half decent size has certifications of some kind. But let's not forget about the the GWE, um, right, Mark? Um, which would be the germ washing expert uh, for those of you that are Jancast listeners. There's, there's a, there's a. Occasionally, we put out stuff about germ washing, and that has to do with uh, people that are kind of, they're experts in spreading false information about uh, potential pathogen control. Yeah, yep. And then we can't forget about the uh, JCL. Oh yeah, yeah. The JCL, which is if you're thinking about it now. Think, think, think. It's the Jancast.com listener. Yes, thank <laughs> you. and thank you for that. <laughs> well, back to the back, back to the survey. So I thought one of the, one I minute mean, the survey's got some really interesting things in it, depending upon where you are in the market and that type of thing. But um, branch locations, how many headquarters and branch locations does the average BSC have? Sixty nine percent have one location which I thought that was really spectacular uh, well, info because that means they're local businesses, uh, uh, not nationwide. The, the um, 11 or more was only represents 5%. So yeah, that's, pretty, that's a pretty interesting stat in general. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like you start to look at that 11 or more, that represents all the national service providers, yeah. the names that everybody is super familiar with, right? Um, but if that represents 5%, that means 95% of the building service contractors have either one location or two to 10 locations, you know, but yeah. that's an indication of being more um, local or regional anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, that to me means that there's a lot of opportunity there. So if somebody's involved as a building service contractor, I, I would look at that news as being quite good news that's an opportunity yeah 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 and then uh one of the other stats i think we're getting close to our end here is what is the most important to facility customers and this one just yes. reinforces everything yes. we've been talking about for the last yes. two years right Mark? <laughs> yes it does number one on the list what is it johnny carson <laughs> Pull it out of the list. And yeah, fifty-three percent. So, what's the most? What's most important to facility customers? Fifty-three percent said a healthy and sanitary environment for building occupants. That is so fantastic. And then yep. the uh, second in line was they wanted it to look and smell nice. Yeah. And yep. third, least important of the top three, was price. Yep. Wow, that's that's complete 180 from five yeah. years ago, right? Yeah. So it was all about price and no real uh, concern or value put on the people performing the services or the quality of the products being used. It's yeah. a 180 now. Quality of the products being used and their performance, as well as the uh, skill level of the people doing the work, has become number one. That's how you get a healthy and sanitary environment. Well, and then so, the, the the following question is: uh, How do you see the outgoing ongoing pandemic and added attention for cleaning affecting your business moving forward. And uh, the, the questions were rated on, do you see an increase? Do you see it staying the same or do you see a decrease? So the, the one of the largest ones was um, disinfections of surfaces and touch points. Uh, they showed that as a, uh, see, yeah, 52% increase. So they're projecting an increase in the need of those services. Uh, uh, so the, I mean, the, the whole list is just like a byproduct of what we've been talking about for the last couple of years, as far as uh, uh, it's not just about, you know, making making stuff smell good. It's about actually making it safe. And and uh, well, there so, yeah. there were a couple other points in there that kind of jumped out at me, too, that were um, 
you know, expected to increase. The, the yeah. One of the things that's expected to increase is the customer scrutiny on the level of cleanliness. In other yep. words, people are being a judge on it. The other thing is expected to increase is the, the cost of cleaning. I mean, yep. you can't get an elevated level or standard and, and have this higher level of frequency of tasks and not expect to see, um, you know, a little bit higher cost involved. Yep. yep. Well, we'll put the we'll put the link for the uh, survey uh, so everybody can read it to uh, their leisure. Uh, and and the I guess there's one other. Little there was bit another we'll survey, about. yeah. There was another survey, yeah. And that was done by Klein Research, um, mm -hmm. and I can mention that because I was actually involved with an interview with uh, Klein Research. Mm -hmm. And so I guess they surveyed eight thousand people, and you know, mine was one of them. Um, but out of all those people they surveyed, the um, future of the cleaning industry, the number one driver is cleaning for health yep. and this elevated standard. And you notice, Scott, that they are dancing all around a term <laughs> that we coined called extreme cleanliness. Yes. New expectations for extreme cleanliness. That's right. And, and there's then news on that. Yeah, we officially got our registered trademark letter from from the the trademark office uh, just last week. So if you were thinking about using that term, uh, call us first. <laughs> you got to have our permission. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, trademark is only good if you uh, enforce it. Uh, if you let people get away with use of your trademark terms, uh, you pretty much are giving it up uh, and uh, uh, we'll be we'll be. We'll be keeping an eye out, so to speak. <laughs> I think that's just awesome, though. I, we're, yep. we, we actually are, are highly visible with our terminology here at Jancast.com. Yep. And well, you, as a JCL, were witness to the unveiling right. of the first use of that trademark term that's here right. on Jancast.com. Yeah, well, thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, and our usual rotation is every other week we're going to every other show we're going to have a guest on we have a guest coming we're not going to say who we're going to you know keep people on the edge of their seats but uh, next show in two weeks we will have a guest on and it'll be very interesting but this one's refreshing this show is refreshing because it just goes to show all the stuff we've been talking about for the last couple of years has ended up being now kind of the standard for the cleaning industry, yeah. The, all the stuff we've been talking about with extreme cleanliness and pathogen control and uh, training being a, a sustainable uh, thing that you can, you know, you never run out of training and all that. So it's been, it's been good to see how this kind of solidify into the new, the new, new. The new, new. I like that. Yeah. Okay, folks. Well, just think of all the rewards that you've received over the last couple of years of being a JCL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all JCLs. Right. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. See y'all and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.